removing the injector is the easiest thing. This is injector number one. I'm not filming this in order. I've already done these three. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to remove this and then we'll crack on with the rest of the video. First things first, got to loosen this pipe. Here you only need to loosen it. Here you got to fully remove it. Grab a little flathead screwdriver, undo the clip. Now pull it. Okay, you have just removed the return. Take the connector off like that. This is the simplest injector removal on any car. Primarily because once you have everything off, you don't need to bash the injector, pry the injector, use a reverse hammer. Just not a thing with these. This is one thing that Ford did extremely well with this engine, amongst others. Get it relatively clean. That's to not get too much shit into the engine. won't be needing that. Of course, before starting, have all the parts ready. Have these replacement seals, have the copper washers. Etc. This part is by far the easiest. To remove the injectors, go on Amazon. I'll uh, leave a link in the description. 21 millimeter laser diesel injector removal tool. You need this window not for removal but for installation and you'll see later why. That's on there. They will be really tight so you gotta put some force into it. Ugh. Get a piece of blue roll ready. Pull the injector, give it a quick wipe off before leaving. Another piece of blue roll, scrunch it up quite thickly. There's your plug. Put that rest back there. Don't let stuff rest too high like this because you will leave a dent on your bonnet. But generally, things back where they were. So you removed your injector, here you have it, I've cleaned this quite extensively with carb cleaner, you can use brake cleaner, but uh, you need carb cleaner to clean the inside of it, so I just end up using it throughout. First thing you do once you take it out, obviously wipe the oil off of it, but you need to crack this nut loose. So the way you do this, this is a 15 millimeter wide, let's get the light here. This here is 15 millimeters. This is 13 millimeters. You need this when putting it back in, but we'll cover that later. When taking this apart, you need a vise, preferably one that's bolted down. I didn't film this because my vise isn't bolted down, embarrassingly. I had to put it between my legs on the floor, between my feet, rather, and use a breaker bar to break this loose. This is 15 millimeters as well. Once you crack that loose, get yourself a clean, well-lit work environment for a clean work environment, I use two boxes. This is the dirty box, uh, but it's actually clean. It's only the dirty box because this is for disassembly. For reassembly, I have a clean one where I lay down an A4 piece of paper. So you crack this loose, you gave it a good clean. The washer, that comes off later. It's easier to actually remove it later when you push the nozzle out. But for now, what you gotta do is twist it. I highly recommend using a box like this with pretty high walls so you don't lose anything. There is a couple really small bits that if you lose you're going out and buying another injector because you can't get them. Okay, Twisted that off. There's a spring here. 
We'll leave that there for now. Put this to the side. Don't wave this about. There is still a little, I'm not sure what to call it, a little post in there that if you chuck this, it will probably fly out. But for me, it's staying in there. I'll show you how to get that out later. Here, you have the next piece of the puzzle. This is the needle. Don't really need to do anything with that. Put that to the side. Now this is the nut along with the nozzle still together because it's been carboned up here. Now it's stuck. Use a piece of wood later to separate that. Okay, here is another spring. Don't want to lose that. This is just for directing the flow. This doesn't really do anything, it doesn't wear out, it's just a chunk of metal cut very precisely. Now this is the offending article. Don't really need to touch it or mess with it or anything, but you can inspect it for damage. Let's bring it here closer. This is what it looks like. This spins. This little control valve comes out of the body like this. Take it out. Sometimes you can see scoring on here. Uh, this one's fine. Uh, you probably have better luck seeing the scoring under a microscope anyway, because, it, because uh, the surface is so small. But here you can straight away see it's quite a big groove. I'm not sure that's supposed to be that. I didn't see this line on any of the other ones, but the main thing, you won't, you won't see the damage on here mostly. You'll see it here. On this surface. If you see circles, small ones, big ones, going around, following the direction of rotation of the valve, that means it's scored and very worn. You're not meant to see anything there. Give it a quick wipe. Okay, now it's dry. You can see marring. Quite a lot of marks. I'll put a close up on the screen for you. But yeah, this is no longer usable. This is why the injector has failed. We won't be using this anymore. Put that to the side. This is the replacement. This cost me about 26 pounds as of January 2023. Uh, this is aftermarket, a, well, meaning the manufacturer is not Delphi or not somebody who's licensed to sell them, who actually knows who's making them. Maybe it's the same people. We don't know. If it was original, instead of this uh, mark, instead of this uh, oval that says one piece, it would say Delphi here. It will have a Delphi logo. Put that on the side. Open this up. Here's the new one. Comes in this little plastic holder. We do the exact same thing with the new one. Push it out. It's not lubricated, so it will feel a little bit tighter. There is no marks, no circles, no marring, no discoloration on this one. Sorry if you can't see that properly, I can't really see the screen of the camera, but you can use your imagination. We don't have to take as good care that everything here is clean and dust proof because we will be cleaning one by one each component and then putting them into these plastic IKEA bags, which I'll get later. So just give it a clean. Blow through the holes. See I'm blowing in this tiny little hole and it's coming out of here. Put it in there. 
course it helps to pay attention to the condition of your gloves. If your gloves are dirty, it doesn't matter how much you clean it. If you're handling it, it will get dirty again. In fact, I feel like I'm going to change my gloves now. Right, next up. Okay, I was talking about the tiny little piece that comes out of this hole in the middle here. Right there. Let's try and get it out. The main method I used to get it out is spraying brake cleaner in it. It usually will shoot out of there. There you go, and it's out. Give everything a good wash. Okay. Now to get the nozzle out. This is quite common. The firing is stuck to the nozzle. Not to the nut, but to the nozzle. To push it out, you need to grab a piece of wood, preferably, a rubber mallet. Imagine this is the wood. You poke it against the wood so you don't hurt the tip. And then you give this a couple small whacks and that should push it out. Okay, I've done just that. This comes off. Roll that in the corner. Here's your nozzle. Here's your nut. The nut to the side for now. This is one of the less carboned up nozzles. The ones that which were much filthier, much more carboned up. I must assume this wasn't the cylinder that's throwing all the black smoke. Give it a good clean. And you can also, if you have something with a longer no nozzle, like a can of WD-40, it's much easier to test the uh, spray of the nozzle. Uh, you probably not see it on the camera, but with your eyes you should be able to see spraying coming from tiny little holes in here in a star pattern. I think there's about six of them. This is another way for the fluid to go. So spray some in there as well. Okay, that's clean. Then the palm, the palm of my hand. Combine them first before putting them in the bag. That way they don't smash into each other. Sealed. Right. Now, same thing with the nut. One side. Take these out. These can uh, piss off. All right, now the injector. I like to spray a little bit to clean the return and uh, the intake. When the diesel comes through here, it will come out of this hole, this one in the middle on the side. So if I put this, put this up against here and spray, that comes out of here again. This one to the right of the center hole is the return. So if I spray into it, the fluid shoots out of the return and I can do it the other way as well. You can always give the body another good rinse off. There'll always be a little bit of oil stuck between the sleeve and the body of the injector. Then I like to just drizzle on some carb cleaner everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. And shake it right out. So there's your disassembled injector. The only thing you're not putting into bags for use in the future is this. 
because this is what you're replacing. Yes, here it is. Welcome to my high-tech assembly line. Taiwanese microchip manufacturers would be jealous of how clean this is. Looks like a spot of diesel. Okay, and here's our new control valve body. I will remove the valve itself and I'll show you why in a second. You have to understand that diesel is a lubricant. For the first time that the injector will be working it will most likely be dry. So what you need is to lubricate the important parts with a little bit of oil. This is the lightest oil that I have. The lighter the better. If you have uh, anything lighter than this, go ahead and use it. In uh, the absence of oil, you can use diesel, but I don't because it smells. And this activity is very smelly enough as it stands. And I'll also take my gloves off. That'll make it slightly easier. Start by putting the needle in the nozzle. Okay, I'm going to put the little tiny bearing, I suppose you call it bearing, whatever it is, in here. Here being the big hole in the center of it, center-ish. You can see what that is, that one. Followed by the spring. Now the next thing to go on will be the control valve. It's really hard to mess up the assembly of this because the little pins uh, that guide you are not centered. There is, it is uh, impossible to put this on the wrong way. Before we do that though, I'm going to grab something that we will need during our reassembly, and that is thread sealer. Mind you, not thread locker, thread sealer. I've seen YouTube videos of people using thread locker. I suppose you can do that too, but that will just make this assembly in the future more difficult. I don't see how this would come apart on its own. Feel free to use thread locker if you like. I don't think it will hurt anything. But medium strength only. No, no uh, Loctite red, just blue. Okay, we'll have that stand on standby. The spring is in here. The little bearing is in there <clears throat> as well. Now, take our assembled control valve body, put that on top. It should use the spring to bounce when you press on it. If the spring doesn't protrude, that means you forgot to put the bearing in. And next up is this. Again, you can't put it in wrong because as you can see, the holes, they're not centered. Neither are the pins. So it's uh, very difficult to put this the wrong way. There we go. It's on. It does want to wobble because of the spring. If you push it, it will be flush, but it seems you like a, it wants to wobble. Not enough to fall off though. It just kind of stays like that. Then the short fat spring goes on here in the middle of this. That's there. Then it's turn for the nozzle with the needle. Now, 
this one you can mess up. No, I'm sorry, you can't. I thought these were centered for a second, they're not. But if you if you have doubts, this hole has to line up with this tiny hole. Remember that? No chance of messing this up. Okay. Now, we kind of hold it together with one hand. Again, this emphasizes the necessity for a box with high walls, because if... Uh, you cock this up and it topples over and uh, springs go flying, at least the box will catch it. This is the point where you put the thread sealer onto the fine threads. I put a tiny drop on one side and a tiny drop on the other side. Somewhere in the middle of the threads. Not too close to the top because we don't want that going into the injector. Here's the nut. I'll let go for a second to put the nut on. Shouldn't really go anywhere. There we go. Sometimes it gets caught. Okay, check that the nozzle doesn't want to rotate with the rest of the assembly. Okay, that is not rotating, that means all the guide pins are in place. And then you just twist it back together. Okay, obviously this is insufficient torque for the nut. Um, this is another discussion point. I have uh, seen a torque spec set for an injector like this. Not this specific injector, a similar injector I've seen a torque spec, but I haven't seen one for this. I'll flash it on the screen now. Uh, I haven't talked any of the ones I've rebuilt so far. I have just simply gotten a 15 millimeter socket on one end and a 15 millimeter span on the other end and I gave it a good twist in my hands as strong as I can. I find that to be sufficient. Somebody else will correct me and tell me that this is wrong and not good enough, but The threads are extremely fine, and uh, I see the potential of the, for them being stripped. They're not like these threads. They're very, very fine threads. Although this is very hard steel, I would rather suffer the consequences of the nut coming loose than stripping the threads on the body. When I do find a torque spec official torque spec for this exact injector, I will uh, let everybody know, but for now this is going to be just as good. It's the injector reassembled. Okay, we're back at the engine, the injector has been rebuilt, now it's time to put it back in, so remove the carefully placed earlier paper plug, and now it's time to clean the injector seat. I'm going to be using, simply, again, the same carb cleaner and compressed air that I will blown down on the, on the seat into the cylinder. This won't hurt anything. Uh, there is nothing that I can introduce into the engine from the cylinder that would cause any problems. If you're really worried about it, you can change the oil. I you can also cut this, recut the seats at this point. This is uh, the right time to do it. However, I'm not going to do it because I don't think it's warranted in, in this uh, situation. I, the condition of the seat is absolutely perfect and this looks like the only time these injectors have ever been out of this engine so I'm just not going to touch it. If your instincts are telling you that you should go ahead and do it. Uh, you'll be better off for it, likely do a better job than me but I'm not doing it. I advise you uh, rebuild the injectors one by one and put them back in and then start the engine and then just repeat the process again. This will save you lots of time if something goes wrong during the rebuild and one of the injectors doesn't work. Alright, now that the seat is clean, nice and shiny, move the air hose away. Grab the injector that you've rebuilt earlier. I'm going to use this opportunity to put the copper washer in because 
I haven't found a way to keep the washer to stay, get the washer to stay on the injector yet. I uh, put it in another way. You can't put grease on the, on the injector, then put the washer on, and that will hold it, but I don't trust that the grease won't be an issue. So I just can't drop it in there like so. Okay, that's in. Verify it's flat with the torch. Yep, it is. Grab your injector. Dab a small amount of oil on the threads to keep it from binding when you're talking it. Same 0W20 that I used on reassembling the injector. Remove the piece of glove that you installed in it earlier. Now you've done all that, you can drop the injector in. I say drop, it's more like very carefully insert. There you go. For this next step you're going to need a very thin 13mm spanner, a half inch drive, and a half inch torque wrench, set to 52 newton meters. First get it all down, all the way down, then back it off slightly and make sure that this is pointing in the right direction. You want to have the uh, plug and the return facing forward. Then put your socket back on, give yourself some space for the wrench, sorry spanner, make sure it's really on there. And start cracking it down. If I had a bigger 13mm ring spanner, I would use it, but this is the only one that would fit because of the thickness of it. Okay, now it's relatively tight and straight. Relatively straight, not exactly straight. It's time to set up your torque wrench to 52 newton meters. Alright, here I go. Click. A couple times for good measure. I've got my finger stuck. That's lovely. Now it's unstuck. And that's your injector torque to spec. And slightly wonky. That'll do. Oh, when I say wonky, I don't mean wonky in the threads. I mean, this isn't exactly facing straight. It's just slightly facing to the side, but still close enough to be able to connect everything without issue. Get your new seal that you put a bit of oil on to help it seat. Done that. Now it's time to plug in the electrical connector. Like that. The return. These hoses are always a bit stiff. So are the O rings, which makes it a little bit tricky to wiggle on fully. Gotta do some gymnastics with it. Close the clip. Okay. Alright. So now we gotta fit the high pressure line. I like to make sure the line is sitting straight before tightening it. 17 millimeter spanner. Nice and snug. 
as well, but then I back off a little bit, leave it just slightly loose. So when I crank the engine for the first time after putting the injector in, I bleed the air out of this line because the fuel will be in the rail about here, but this is just going to be all air. So we've got to get that out. You don't, I suppose you don't really have to, but an airlock in this line is not helping you. This is loose, but I'm going to crack the top of it. When it's spraying out like that, you know there's no air in there anymore. Okay, now we're going to start the car. It's going to run on three cylinders to begin with, and then it should smooth out. Once you've charged the battery, of course. finish the video there because um, I need to discuss a very important point and that's something that everyone's been asking about regarding this procedure is what about the coating to which I respond generally what about it let me explain the injector is dumb it doesn't have any circuitry in it it's just a magnetic coil and the metal bits that you saw in the video during the rebuild that's to say that you can literally swap injectors places and they will work. They're not unique. They are unique in a sense that each injector is ever so slightly different and that's due to the tolerances of the manufacturer. Those differences are compensated for by the adaptation codes. That's what you're coding in when you change the injectors. Now that's to make the car run as perfectly as possible. Bearing in mind that throughout the life of the car the tolerances inside the injector as wear occurs continuously change. So the argument that the injectors will work poorly if they aren't coded properly isn't really relevant because if that was the case you'd have to every 60,000 miles take your injectors out, not rebuild them but just put them on a stand where it would generate new adaptation codes then put them back in and recode them. Besides maybe the reaction time parameter which I must add if you're putting the same injectors back in the same holes changing the control valve doesn't actually affect. There's not much of value that uh, the code can give you that the car can't learn itself. The car can learn the injector over time through adaptations on the fly. The same way in a petrol car the fueling is adjusted by uh, long-term lambda sensor data. The fuel injector isn't some overly complicated electronic piece of wizardry that most uh, injector rebuild places would want you to believe. And the code on the injector is absolutely nothing more than a code for adaptations. Yes, the car won't run as well as with injectors that have been on the machine and had new codes generated and then had those codes programmed into the ECU. However, that is only for a brief amount of time. After a certain mileage, the car will have enough data to adapt to the injectors and will run properly again. What I observed with my car is that when I put the injectors in, the engine would run, it would idle, it would rev, it would smoke a little bit. Uh, on the first drive I noticed that it was a little bit low on power, and it was a little bit low on power mainly at the low end. However, after driving it a bit, that power on the low end came back. Then I had issues uh, where it would feel a little bit down on power in uh, the mid-range of RPM. So, say you're in uh, third gear going from... 30 miles an hour to 45 miles an hour, it would be a little bit sluggish. The quickest way I found to get that power back, to make the car relearn, is to go on a motorway and in uh, the highest gear go from 50 miles an hour to 70 miles an hour, foot flat onto the accelerator, and to do this a couple of times in between long stints of consistent speed motorway driving. After about two hours of driving, I noticed that all the power was back again, the car smoked less and less and less over time until 
it was uh, no longer even noticeable when the car was stationary. And, um, yeah, it was all back to normal, pretty much. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope this will help somebody who wants to do the same thing that I did. And uh, take care of this problem yourself for a fraction of the cost. Best of luck and have a nice day.